Well, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, depending on what it is for you. Today, we're going to step in deeper into Psalm 41. So let us look at a scripture. We're going to look at a scripture in Psalm 119, and uh, we're going to read verse 124. And because of where my camera is, this is hard to see. Sorry. 124, deal with your servant according to your love. And that word is hesed, which we've talked so many times about. Deal with your servant according to your unfailing covenantal love and teach me your decrees. God, I pray today that you would teach us your decrees, that as we open up your word and we look at this, God, that we will get more understanding um, of who you are um, and that we will make this be all about you. Amen. So let's look at Psalm 41, another Psalm of David. Um, so let's, let's read. Blessed are those who have regard for the weak. The Lord delivers them in times of trouble. The Lord protects and preserves them. They are counted among the blessed in the land. He does not give them over to the desires of their foes. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and restores them from their bed of illness. I said, have mercy on me, Lord. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, when will he die and his name perish? When one of them comes to see me, he speaks falsely while his heart gathers slander. Then he goes out and spreads it around. All my enemies whisper together against me. They imagine the worst for me, saying a vile disease has afflicted him and he will never get up from the place where he lies. Even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who shared my bread has turned against me. But may you have mercy on me, Lord. Raise me up that I may repay them. I know that you are pleased with me, for my enemy does not triumph over me. Because of my integrity, you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Sounds like such an ending, doesn't it? So let's look at Psalm 41 for a second um, and talk about a couple things before we go back and start digging this apart a little bit. First of all, uh, again, we see two different things in this psalm, just like we did in Psalm 40. We see thanksgiving, um, and then we also see a prayer for help. So we are going to, again, label this as thanksgiving and also a prayer for help. Because we definitely see both of that in this psalm. Now, two interesting features about this psalm. Um, one is this is the book end of what we call book one. The Psalms are uh, separated into what we call books. Um, and we just, we are finishing book one. Um, so interesting that this one starts with the word blessed are those. Now, if you go back to Psalm one, Psalm one, which would be the first book in book one of the Psalms also starts with the word blessed. Blessed are those who walk not in the counsel of the wicked. So interesting that the beginning and the end of book one of the Psalms starts with the word blessed or happy. Um, so the, the thought here is this, are all the Psalms in book one to be prayed and studied as a means to living happy? I don't know, but that's just an interesting thought. So what we're going to do is we're going to write these, these interesting things about the psalm. So number one, um, we know that this is the, la I'm just going to write it like this, the last psalm in book one. Okay, number two, it starts with blessed. And so does the first psalm in that book, in book one, the first psalm in book one. So just kind of an interesting fact. Now there's one more fact that I think is really good for us to always look at, and we will be as we go through the psalms, but every book of the psalms ends with a doxology. Um, so a doxology. So uh, let's just write that down too. So I'm just going to put down, um, let's see, at the end 
of each book, there is a doxology. Okay, so let's go look at that for a second. So right here is the doxology. Now what I did in my Bible is I just um, went like this. Here's my doxology. And then I took a, and I just went like this. So this is the doxology. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. And we'll see that at the end of each book that there is a doxology. So when we're done at the end, we'll probably go back and like uh, read all the doxologies so that we can see all of them in one sitting because I think it's kind of neat to look at it that way. Um, but there's our first one. Um, so now let's go back and start to break down this psalm just a little bit. Um, so... This one is, um, oh, so we're going to look at verses one through three first. Um, and this is really what God does for those who take care of the weak. So if we want to just label this right here, blessed are those who have regard for the weak. So this is really all about um, what God does for them. And this is uh, verses one through three. So one through three is all about what God does for those who regard the weak. Um, and I want to read to you something that I read out of my New International Commentary on the Old Testament. <clears throat> it said this, um, as is the case with all the promissory and benedictory sections of the Psalms, these promises do not betray a naive faith on the psalmist's part that God's elect are immune from the realities of life in a fallen world. Rather, the promise indicates something about the basic character of God and thus bear witness to something about the characteristic way that the Lord acts. <clears throat> Which I thought was good because I think sometimes we read the Psalms and we're like, the Lord protects and preserves them. And then we pull that out as a promise um, from God to us. And we have to remember a couple things. Number one, it's a song that somebody wrote. It's not necessarily doctrine. Um, it's him writing about how he's feeling at that moment and what he has seen God do. So we have to be careful about not pulling it out as a promise and saying this is what's always going to happen. Um, but it is a characteristic of God and how God does work sometimes. So the Lord protects, uh, the Lord delivers them out of trouble. He protects, he preserves um, he does not give them over to the desire of their foes. Uh, he sustains them when they're sick and restores them. So those are just some of the things that David has seen um, for those who take care of the weak, because that is something that God really wants us to be doing, is to make sure that we're watching out for those who cannot take care of themselves. And then it turns to, so this is basically our Thanksgiving section, right? He's talking about praising God, being thankful. Um, we're happy because God takes care of us, right? And then the next section is his prayer. So from 4 through 10, basically what it sounds like in this is that he's recollecting an older time of crisis um, when he was praying for rescue. It doesn't seem as strong sometimes as some of them when he's in deep, deep distress, um, and we're going to look up a few of the words in this section. So just um, to see what they are. So have mercy on me. Now, when we see the word mercy, a lot of times it's hesed, which is um, that covenantal love. Um, and sometimes it's uh, like be gracious, show favor on me. So I always like to look it up and see which one is this. So we're going to look up have mercy on me. We're going to look up heal me. What does that mean? Heal me. And then I like to always look up the word sin to find out which word it is. Now, if you weren't with us for Psalm, I think it was Psalm 32. We went through the different words for sin that are in the Bible. There's avon, chata, and pesha, and it would be good to look back at that so that you know what each one of those means. Um, so that we're gonna, but we're gonna look those words up. So I'm gonna come over to the side like I always do, and I'm gonna write mercy, and heal, and sin. 
so that we can look up and see what those words mean. And when I say I'm looking them up, and I, I don't do it in every psalm that I'm teaching, but I do it in some of them just so that you can see again, but I'm using the Bible Hub app. Um, and so what I'll do is I will go into the Bible Hub app and I will look up Psalm 41 and then I will look up verse 4. This is verse 4 and then it shows the verse and all you have to do is click on the word mercy and you can see what the definition is um, in the Hebrew word and the definition for it. And so I've already done all that. Um, and so we're going to look up the word mercy and mercy is 2603. Um, and it's the word Hanan. So this is not Hesed. This is Hanan. Okay. And this is the one that means um, to be gracious and to show favor. Okay. So that's what he's praying for there. Lord, show me favor. Okay. Be gracious to me. Show me favor. In other words, hear my prayer. Answer my prayer is really what he's saying there. Now, heal me. Um, interesting, um, when I looked that up, uh, the word me is actually the word nefesh. Now, I don't know if you remember, but nefesh, so I'm going to write this like this. This is the word nefesh. And nefesh is the word that we see often um it means it's your soul. And when we talk about your soul, we talk about your passions, your desires, you, uh, the inner man. It's, that's really what it's talking about. So he's, he's saying, heal my soul. So heal the inside of me. So this isn't a physical, my body is in pain. It's heal me, um, who I am, the essence of who I am. That's what nefesh means. So I, I found that to be really interesting. And then, for I have sinned. And the word for sin here is, uh, it's 2398, and it's the word chata, which is, in general, this is, you miss the mark. And again, if you want further on that, um, refer to uh, Psalm 32, the notes for that, and uh, I, there's information there. Um, it would be beneficial to just print the notes for Psalm 32 uh, so that you have those somewhere in your Bible. And I've, I've actually done that in my Bible. Um, and if you look, well, let me just show you in my Bible. I have, um, I put tabs in my Bible. And I think I've shown this before, but I put tabs in my Bible not to show me where the books of the Bible are, but to show me different concepts that I want to go back to often. So because we see chesed in the Bible so often in the Psalms, I have the de definition for chesed on one of the pages, and then this shows me where the definition for chesed is. Um, uh, we talked about justice, sedek, and um, mishpat a lot, and that's this is where my definition is for that. And then um, we see sin and iniquity and transgression and if you open up to that page um it says i have this whole thing along here sin transgression and iniquity all the definitions then i also have more notes on page 681 in my bible and so then i can turn to page 681 in my bible so let's just turn there for a second just so i can show you and then here i have on page 681 the typed up notes and that's by Psalm 32, which I was just talking about, um, the typed up notes on the three different words and what they mean. So to me, that's super important to have in your Bible because you're going to see those words a lot. And it, it is helpful to know which word they're talking about. So just some tips on how to write in your Bible. So let's go back here. So have mercy on me. He's saying, show me favor, Lord, heal my very soul, um, for I have missed the mark um, when I've been walking with you. And then the next section, the next section here, he starts to talk about his enemies um, and just kind of lists how they're treating him and how they're acting towards him. And this is like when you read it, you're like, wow, my enemies say of me in malice. So you can see right there already, it's like they they are saying things to get back at him, um, not 
not because of anything he's done. Um, but then he goes through and he's just like, um, they say of malice when he dies. Okay, so it sounds like he might be sick. When he dies, will his name perish? They're hoping that. When no one... When one of them comes to see me, he speaks false, falsely while his heart gathers slander. Then he goes and spreads it around. So it's like they're all talking about him. All my enemies whisper together against me. So he's seeing um, them plotting evil against him, uh, expecting him to die when, when, wherever he goes out, maybe to battle. Um, they're imagining the worst. A vile disease has affected him. He will never get up from the place where he lies. So here's... Again, where we can see he's, it looks like he's sick and his enemies are just coming against him and speaking evil and hoping that he's going to die. But this is the part that's always so difficult when you read it. Even my close friend, someone I trusted and who I shared my bread with has turned against me. And again, um, we see that and we've seen that other times in the Bible too. And, and again, it's because of the thought process that they had. And that thought process was if you were sick, um, it was probably God's curse on you uh, because of something that you did wrong. Um, and then, and you can see that even David's thought, right? Have mercy on me, Lord, heal me for I have sinned. And so he's thinking that he's sick because of his sin. Um, and that is often their thought process in this day. So if you are sick because you're cursed of God, um, you don't want to be around that person because you don't want that curse to fall on you. So here's where you see even his friends turn away from him. Um, and uh, he's having a hard time with that, right? He was faithful um, and then his friends turned against him. So someone that was with him when he was healthy, but then when he's not, he just leaves him. Then he goes on to verse 10. Um, so let's go to verse 10. But may you have mercy on me, Lord. There's that again, show favor, right? Raise me up that I might repay them. Now, um, it doesn't really say what he means by that is uh, to repay them. Uh, he just says, raise me up that I may repay them. Now, there's a few thoughts there. Um he could be asking quite literally for a restoration of health so that his enemies um, might get what they deserve, um, which in terms of like his inheritance, they would get nothing because he survived, right? So it could be something as simple as that. Um, it could be that he's hinting that when he returns to health, he would be a good friend to them um, and prove to them how they should have acted. It's really hard, or is it? Is it uh, what we call that imprecatory again? I hope something bad happens to them. I'm going to repay them. We just don't know because there isn't any other clarifying sentences in this area um, for us to know. Um, I know that you are pleased with me, for my enemy does not triumph over me. See, there's that concept again. Um, I sinned. Okay, and so God made me sick. This is what he's thinking. Okay, but now my enemy has not triumphed over me. So that means that you are on my side and that you are pleased with me. Because if God wasn't pleased with him, then his enemy would be attacking him. That's the thought process, again, of where they're at. So I know you are pleased with me for my enemy does not triumph over me. It's that simple thought that... Uh, that if things are going good, God is for me. And if things are going bad, God is against me. That was their thought process. Now, I'm saying it like that because I don't necessarily believe that that's true. But that was their thought process. And that, that's how we're looking at this. Um, and then it ends basically again with uh, this final stanza of just what we would call uh, worship or thanksgiving. I know that you're pleased with me. My enemy does not triumph over me because of my integrity. You uphold me and you set me in your presence forever. So things that he's thankful for, that the enemy is not triumph, triumphing, triumph over him. So um, the enemy does not triumph over me. Things he's thankful for, you uphold me and you set me in your presence forever. But do you see, again, the thought process here? Because of my integrity, you uphold me. Because I'm walking the right way, you uphold me. That that's again ooh, that thought process, and then we have that doxology, a word of praise and thanksgiving to God. So, uh, just a neat psalm 
and some interesting features in this psalm. So uh, seeing God just move in our lives and um, the way that we should pray. I mean, I look at it sometimes and I, I see, you know, some of the thought processes here that they have. I'm not sure that I agree with that thought process. So then I'm going to be careful. I'm not going to pray that way. But I love the have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, Lord. That's what we would call, if you've ever heard of a breath prayer, a breath prayer is just a simple statement. And there's a lot of them in the Bible. Um, and really right here are two of them. Have mercy on me and heal me. Simple breath prayers that we can be praying all day long as we go about our day. Um, uphold me could be another one. I love this. Set me in your presence forever. Um, I know he's saying that God did that, but what a neat way to pray. Set me in your presence forever. So Lord, I thank you for the fact that you deliver us, you protect us, you preserve us, you sustain us, you uphold us, God. Those are the things that we have seen you do in our in our lives, the characteristic things that you do. And I'm so thankful for that, God. Um, and I do pray that you would have mercy on us, Lord, and that you would set us in your presence forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for Psalm 41. See you next time.